sanctuary, Lord. Yes. Lift our hearts, Lord. Lift our burdens, Lord. And just give back to you. Oh, Lord God. With grace and mercy, you have blessed us, oh God. So right now, Lord, we are offering you our praises and open hearts to receive. Oh God, we ask that you bless Pastor Paul, Lord, as he prepares to give us a word, Father, that will enlighten us and give us hope and give us peace. We thank you for being our Savior. We thank you for loving us and dying on the cross for us and for forgiving us of our sins. And right now, Lord, we thank you for the rainbows of this, Lord, that just fill our lives, oh God. And Father God, we thank you for those who you have constantly, constantly kept in our hearts, oh God, that you are renewing as you renew us right now. Amen. Father God, bless those who are watching, and we ask that you receive all that we have to offer to you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 CCA, church family, and those that are watching from Facebook this morning, please have a seat if you can. It is now time for our announcements for the week. But first of all, our Pastor Paul Nicholas of CCA and First Lady Florence Nicholas of CCA would like to welcome you all this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 They say thank you for coming by and sharing this time with us together as we must thank the Lord for assembling us together today Amen. in his presence. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And the announcements for the week are Friday night Zoom class, Love Works is the title. It's 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Please check the website at www.ccaofgod.org to get the information to connect to each ministry. Wednesday night's Bible study notes are available online as well. Produce boxes will be available on Saturday, this weekend, March 20th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And coming March 27th, we will have our community outreach. As we prepare for Resurrection Sunday, we will be giving away pandemic relief PPE. As well as food, gas cards, and other items to aid our community during this time. Pray for an open heaven as we plan to have prayer for everyone in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. shall give as he is able according to the blessings of the Lord your God which was given to you. When I think about the blessings of God, some blessings only can come from God. Amen. The air you breathe, Amen. nobody can give it to you. Right. We get a little, little stimulus now going on. <laughs> but that's only a little blessing of what God can do. Don't count your blessings on the stimulus. Count your blessings coming from God. Amen. And give back to God a portion of what he's given you. We all know the scriptures, the different scriptures that says give. The measure you give, God will bless you. But we shouldn't give just for that reason. We should give because we are here because he created us. We breathe because he breathed breath in our bodies. That's the reason we give. We should have the right motive when we give. Amen? Amen. So let's be a blessing and give back to God. As we give to God, do we realize we, are, we allow the church to bless others? And that's one of the things that we are created to do. 
be a blessing as God has blessed us. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity, Lord God, you've given us, Lord God, to be a blessing and to serve you, Lord God. We pray right now, Lord God, that we give, Lord God, with the right motives, Lord God, and a mighty heart, Lord God. We give, Lord God, the way, Lord God, that we know, Lord God, your word will go forward, Lord God. But we give in a way, Lord God, we know, Lord God, it is blessed by you, Lord God. Give us, Lord God, the understanding, Lord God, and knowledge to know that everything we have, Lord God, and everything we are, Lord God, we are because of you, Lord God. Each day we live is a blessing, Lord God. Each cent we have in our pocket is a blessing, Lord God. Each family member that we love is a blessing, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to dedicate, Lord God, our all, Lord God. Not just our finances, Lord God, but our time, our talents, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to give it all to you. I want you to use it, Lord God, in ways, Lord God, that we can't imagine. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
your strength. Yes, Lord. And he will mount you up with the wings of eagles. Yes. You shall ride in that glory. And you shall walk in that faint. For God is an all-consuming fire. Yes. He will hide you in his pavilion. Yes. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seek him while he may be found. This is the atmosphere of miracles. This is the atmosphere of deliverance. Yes. This is the atmosphere of moving from our flesh into the spirit of the living God. Yes. That he might do in us what he desires. So take captive those thoughts. Every wayward thought, every harmful thought, every de de demeaning thought, every condemning thought, take it captive right now yes. in the name of Jesus. For he is our rod and our staff. He will keep us. He will keep us. Yes. Yes. So keep your mind on for as we think on him, he will give us perfect peace. Yes. Come on, let's condemn those things that we need to condemn. It is our inheritance as children of the living God. Yes, so we thank you, Father, thank you. stirring the atmosphere, for reaching through time and speaking to your people. You. It is a revelation and it is an inspiration to our hearts. That you might find and think of us a mindful of man. We thank you, Lord. And we embrace your presence in this place. Yes. Whatever we have need of, you already know. Yes. And we thank you for the anointing that delivers today. So, Father, have your way in us. Yes. For as we worship you, your presence sits with us. And now that you're here, we can honor the king. We can honor the king. Yes. He's more than your situation. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. He's yes. greater than your issues. Yes. He's more than enough. So let's not give up. Let's not fall out. But let's just keep our hearts and minds stayed on him. Yes. For in due season we shall reap yes. if we do not faint. So strengthen us today for the battle. Yes. Strengthen us, O oh God, for the course that we must follow, for the path that we must blaze, God. Keep us, Lord, keep us. Lord, that we might prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is your perfect will for our lives. Come on, no more cutting against the grain. No more doing it my way, God. But God, I submit to you right now in the name of Jesus. What is not my will, but thine will be done. Yes. Do it in us today, Lord God. Do something miraculous in our lives yes. as we have presented ourselves living sacrifices yes. to worship you as lively stones. So take away the weeds. Take away the sins that so easily beset us, God. And help us to run this race. With the witnesses watching, God, we're going to run this race. Yes. And we're going to complete our course. And we're going to do it in Jesus' name. For no man go to the Father except by him. So thank you for the access yes. by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Thank you, God, that we can come with boldness and obtain grace yes. and obtain mercy. Yes. So we bless you, Father. Have your way in us and have your way through us, O oh God. Yes. God, let us walk with the armor that you've given us that we win this war, that we fight this good fight of faith, Lord God, that we lack nothing, Lord God, but we are well-pleasing in your sight. 
lacking nothing in the name of Jesus. Cover us today, Lord, and have your perfect will in us. And we give you praise in advance for all that you're going to do. Healing's taking place right now. Our yeah. wholeness is happening right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, our minds are being renewed. Our spirits are being renewed right now in the name of Jesus. It says that our man, our man perishes. Our spirit is being renewed every day. Every day. So thank you, Father, for doing it. And we give you praise, oh God. We thank you for setting the atmosphere that we might receive the word of God, that it might prove and do with us and Lord God what you've sent it to do. For your word never returns void. It will, it will, it will accomplish the very purpose yes. wherein you've sent it, Lord God. So cover us with your word today. Give us ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And we give you praise. Yes. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say, in Jesus' name. Come on, at that name, Jesus' name. Come on, demons are trembling at Jesus' name. Come on, we celebrate your voice. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way. Come on, have your way, God. Have your way. Yes, amen. 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 The, many of you may not be familiar with the Pentecostal experience, uh, but God moves by his spirit. Somebody say amen. 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 It's by his spirit that he moves, and in his, in his name, we can uh, call on the name of the Lord God, and he will answer. Amen. amen. So we are here this morning. I thank you all for being here. I uh, see my spirit is something back there. Brother Andre, God bless you, sir. God bless you. And uh, we just thank God for what he's doing in our presence. Just want to remind everybody, because we are Pentecostal church, maybe you're watching at home and you're trying to figure out what's going on. But, of course, our church is led by the spirit. Amen. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you can see it outlined that there's a manifestation. Amen. See, everything is a manifestation. But if it's by the spirit, amen, come on, we get edified as the church. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14 outlines uh, what we experience today. With it. Uh, it says there's tongues, and then uh, after the tongues, if we edify the church, there's an interpretation of tongues. Okay. Sometimes by two, sometimes by three, no more. But God does that so that he can edify the church. Amen. Come on, somebody needed that word today, amen? amen? Come on, I love it when God reaches through time and touches our lives, amen? amen. Come on, it's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. So uh, if you have your Bibles, and you should, amen, we are in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, if you look at verse 6 with me. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Uh, praise God for you all today. Good to see you. Uh, this, things are starting to change, amen? amen. Come on, we're starting to see God move and uh, some of the things that's happening around us and in our community, especially with the, the pandemic and things that Starting to shift, starting to move. So we thank God for it. And soon we, we'll probably still be having services outside. So uh, be listening out for that. I'm hoping to have our Easter services outside. And we're going to do something different. Amen. Yeah. And we're going to have some things happening outside uh, to bless our children. And just, you know, just celebrate the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Well, God says he is the, Jesus said he is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. So we got to make sure we're living that life that God has called us to. And that's not just to exist, but it's to have life and have it what? More, more, more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Oh, so we can't just live a base. We can't just live existing. We have to have, live a life that's well-pleasing to God. And in that life, it is what? It is abundant life. More abundant life. You think you got it good now? Watch and see what God's going to do. Amen? Amen. Watch and see what God's going to do. You ain't had it good yet till God puts his hand on you. Amen? Amen. See, when God puts his hand on you and he blesses you, you know you've been blessed. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody could give you something and they can bless you and they can make you feel good. But when God blesses you, he says more than you could ask or imagine or even think. Amen? Amen? According to the power of God that is working in you. Amen? Amen. Come on, so this morning we are uh, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 4. I gave y'all time to get there. Amen? Amen? Just want to remind everybody also about the... 
on March, uh, on the 26th, uh, is that the 26th or 27th? 27th. 27th, okay. 27th is that Saturday, amen? amen. We're going to have our community outreach, and uh, we've been talking about some of the things we want to do. We want to do a drive through but we also want to have access, access for prayer, and we want to have access for people who want information. So within that, we want to have uh, tents for information, and we also want to have a tent for people who, who wants to pray or want to be prayed for to come and pray and to get prayed for. Amen? Amen. So that's going to take all of us and every hand on deck. Amen. Because we're going to have a lot of moving parts. Uh, some of the things we've got down, we've done it before, but some this part of it is going to be new. Uh, so I'm going to have a meeting uh, this Saturday coming up. If you want to be a part of that outreach, some of you are going to be calling because I want you to be a part of that outreach. Amen. And I need you. Amen. And I want you to be there. So uh, we're going to be set up a meeting this Saturday at uh, 1130. And uh, we're going to meet just, just a brief hour before they start distributing the food and, uh, so that we can get in and out and uh, give the diagram out and the things that we plan to do. Amen. Amen. All right. We in First Timothy. Amen. Amen. Y'all got me on the clock? Amen. All right. Good luck. Good. Amen. 1 Timothy, if we live, uh, chapter 4, looking at verse 6. It says, if you instruct the brethren in the things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully. Somebody say carefully. Yeah. See, see, sometimes we follow, but we don't follow carefully. See, when we follow carefully, that means we pay attention to details. Amen? Amen? Come on, some people are excellent at what they do. They may not be the best at what they do, but they're excellent at what they do because they pay attention to details. Amen. See, when I come in the sanctuary, I'm, first thing I'm doing, I'm paying attention to details. I want to know who's here. And I want to know who's not here. Amen. I want to know who's singing and who's not singing. I want to know who's ushering and who's not ushering. I want to know who's participating and who's not participating. Because I want to pay attention to details. See, sometimes we come in environments and we come in situations that God has called us to. And we do not take the time to pay what? Attention to details. Come on, I know we fine and y'all look good, dressed up on your Sunday morning, got your tie straight, got your collar right. But the reality is you pay some attention to what? Details. Come on, you made sure that one leg was iron. You made sure both legs was iron. Amen. Come on, you made sure your hair was combed on both sides. Amen. You made sure you had your stuff together. Amen. Amen. Come on, because what? We pay attention to details. See, that's the same way God is saying here. He said that we got to be following what? Carefully. Well, some things we miss and we stumble over and we wade our way through because we don't pay attention to what? To details. Come on. You've been dealing with people and dealing with folks and struggling in your marriage because you've never taken the time to pay attention to details. Come on. The Bible tells the man, the husband, to dwell with your wife with what? See, we need a class right now. We need a class right now. Don't even know what God told you. He said dwell with her with what? Understanding. That means what? You got to learn that girl. <laughs> you better learn that girl. Yeah. See, because if you don't, you're out of the will of God. And you want her to learn you and know you and hear you complaining and whining and crying, but you don't know her. Yeah. And the Bible says to dwell with her when understand. If you don't understand her, it's hard to live with her. Well, you always point out flaws. You always point out what went wrong. You always point out why you don't do what I asked you to do. It's because you have not paid attention to details. Come on, I was preaching better. Y'all say it. Amen. amen. <laughs> say on me. Say something. Amen. amen. Come on, God calls the husband to dwell with his wife with what? Understanding. Why? So that he can cooperate in the relationship. Amen. See, if you don't understand, see, I got to learn flow. Come on, I know who she is over these, these almost 35 years. I know who she is. See, I know when we go to buy a car or something, and I want to make the deal, I don't say nothing. Then <laughs> she want to make the deal, I say something. See, we got to know who we are. Come on, we got to know who we are. So when we go in and she don't say nothing, we working on something now. He done gave the price, and she done got quiet. Oh, my God. Because I know her. 
She gonna say, well, why are you charging me with this? And why are you charging me with that? And why is this here? Why? Because she's paying attention to details. See, a lot of things in our life is just a matter of us, what? Paying attention to the details. Especially in the word of God. When I come to preach, you should already be excited because you've already been paying attention to details. You have been in your word. You done had your devotional. God's been speaking to you all week. So when you get here on Sunday, you're just excited because of what God already told you. Amen? Amen. See, a lot of things just become confirmation. It just become God stamping and sealing what he already said in your life. And we don't need that prophecy. We don't need someone to prophesy of our life because God's already spoken it. And if somebody does speak to you, they just confirm it what God already said. Amen? Amen. So, so we have to follow it, what? Carefully. See, and then after we've carefully followed the doctrine, it, it says this. He gives us a rebuke. He said, but reject profane. Listen to this, church. And oh, who? Wives. See, some people say wives, W-I-S-E, no. He said wives. <laughs> and he said, oh, wives tales. That means they've been speaking something that ain't even true. He said, reject it, rebuke it, set it apart from you. All these what? These wives, these wives fables, amen? And then it says something real important here. It says, but, but, but do what? Do what? See, some of y'all don't even want to say it, let alone do it. No. <laughs> got a lot of laughter, church. Y'all can't hear that at home, but got a lot of laughter. But the reality is our challenge is many times that we have to what? Act, work at it. Yeah, amen. He's, look what he says here. Look what the word says. It says, exercise yourself what? Toward God. That, that means you're just not going to wake up and say, I'm godly. Yeah. Right. You got to do what? Work at it. Because I don't have a lot of At least somebody hold my mic. Thank you. Close as you can. I'm sorry, we're going to take time for an illustration. You may be able to see it at home, but y'all going to feel it here. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, some of our biggest challenges, we won't take time to exercise. See, a lot of times we don't take time to exercise because it takes what? Effort. You want the beastbody.com, but you're not willing to put more than effort. See, when I go down there and see them dumbbells, I'm like, oh my God. Not that again. Well, when you go out and you should go for your walk, you say, oh no, not that again. But God tells us something real important here. He says, do, do what? Exercise. Come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. You're stronger than me. Come on, Jay. He said that these 50. They got 50, man. They just look 50. You can have it. Can you have that? All right, come. You're on TV now. Come here. See, Jay, now I just want you to pump him just until you get tired. See? I'm testing him like God what? Test us. See, he's getting a thank you, John. He's getting a benefit. That's right. By getting a what? I had mine yesterday, so you're getting yours. Amen. So he getting a what? A benefit. And God says when we exercise ourselves, that's all you get. That's all right. I'm 51. You can do more than me, Jay. He tired. Okay, we good. All right, but hold on to that because you might need to exercise some more. But to see, it takes effort. That's right. And many times our challenges, we don't want to put forth the effort. Yeah. Sometimes we get tired of doing it. But God says, exercise yourself. That's Hear right. that, church? Yeah. Don't wait for somebody to try to push your button. Don't wait for somebody to say, invent something that works for you. Right. Don't, don't try to think it's going to be a pill or a drink or something that's going to take it all away. Come on, they sell it every day. They're making millions of dollars. Here, yeah, drink this and you'll get slim. Drink this and you'll be better. That's Eat right. this, drink that. That's right, yeah. And God says, he says what? Exercise That's yourself. Right, yeah. Sometimes you got to put in what? The work. Yeah. You ain't going in your godliness because you're not what? You're not putting in the work. You got to put the work in. See, if you want something and you want to get the benefits of it, you got to put in the work. Yeah. See, when we desire that and when God is using our lives to do certain things, we have to make sure we're doing what? Our part. Yeah. 
And he tells us here, exercise yourself towards godliness. See, because it's really not about the things we think it's about. And we get tired. But God says exercise. Because the more you do it, see, at one time, I was struggling doing five pounds more than a hundred times. And then I had to move up to 10 pounds. And then to 20 pounds. And then to 30 pounds. And you got to 40 yet. But I got to five then. Got to 10. Got to 20. Got the 30 down. But I ain't got to the 40 yet. Why? Because I'm trying to exercise myself. See, because what? I got a different capacity. And many of us don't know our capacity or what we can do until we what? Exercise it. Jane could do this more than I can. Longer than I can. But he don't do it all the time. So when he got that weight, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> That's heavy. You can drop your seat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Give him a hand, church. <laughs> See, we have to exercise ourselves towards godliness. Trust me, church. We don't become godly just because we go to church. That's right. Cool. It, it is expected. But it doesn't happen if you don't exercise or make, right. make some, put the work in or make some effort. Amen? Amen? See, if we're not making the effort, if it's not hurting, if it's not making us want to drop it, if it's not making us tired, if it's not doing anything to us, we're not what? Putting the work in. Come on, sometimes you just got to follow things and, and do things the way God says do them. And then guess what? We start to see the results. Look what the word of God says. He says, exercise yourself towards what? Godliness. Well, you can see how many people in the gym. See how many people that got their stretch pad and thinking they fit. They ain't fit. They just squeeze that stuff all in. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> and we think we fit because we are squeezed it all in. Got a big shirt because you can't see the squeeze. <laughs> but the reality is, if we're gonna get the results, we got to put the what the work in. Amen. If we are not challenging ourselves and we're not following things that we should follow and doing the instructive things that God has called us to do, we can exercise our faith or exercise what we want to do, but it all be in vain if we're not putting what the, the work in. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Put the work in. Amen. He said, exercise yourself toward godliness. Mm -hmm. For verse 8, for bodily exercise profits what? Mm -hmm. Now don't get don't miss this. It will profit you. Mm -hmm. That's why I got the weight. Mm -hmm. That's why I do the things we do. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to what? Profit you. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be like you think. Because bodily exercise only profits you what? So that you don't what? Overcompensate. Mm -hmm. See, if you think being godly or being something that, that is uh, uh, what God wants and you think it's in getting the physical fitness, then you've missed it. Because you, you put too much attention to details on your flesh and really not on your spirit. See, that's how so many people fail. And they gain, they go back, they can't get there, they won't get there. Because it's not the physical part that you can't master. It is the spiritual part, your discipline. Your self-control. Come on, pass on the buffet. Amen. 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 Y'all funny. <laughs> pass the second plate. Amen. <laughs> But, but that takes what? A spiritual discipline. Woo. You might need to carry out every day. Somebody got to cook. Somebody's got to cook. Come on, if not, we'd be door dashing and, and calling the people to feed us. And, and really, we just dealing with what? Self-control. And then the other big part is what? Our discipline. 
See, that's why God said uh, bodily exercise is only going to profit you a little. Because what you really need is the spiritual element that's going to get you over the top. Amen. Amen. See, that's, that's really what we need. We need that spiritual element in our life, working in our life, to get us what? Over the top. Amen. Can't get over the top just doing it our way. Because some days you're going to feel like it, and then a lot of days you're not. Okay. That's true. Well, that's why we can't deliver ourselves. That's why we can't free ourselves from the bondage that we're in. Because it's not about ourselves. It's not about doing it ourselves. It is about God's spirituality and his godly living that's going to change our lives. Amen. Well, our life don't change just because I bought a book. It, it, that might help you, that might enhance what you know, but it's your spiritual prowess and understanding of that book that's going to get you somewhere. Come on, because we done had the Bible for years. Right. And everybody trying to get that book. I'm going to get that book. I'm going to get that book. Read that book. Amen. It's 66. It's 66 of them. There's some small, some big, but read those books. Amen. Come on. The, please understand, church. That we cannot love God more and live for him less. Amen. It don't work like that. That's right. You can't tell me you love him. Come on, the Bible said, don't tell somebody you love them. He said, and, and not mean it because if you do that, then you're lying. Don't say you love God. And don't think you're lying. And the truth ain't in you. Come on, we can't live, we can't live and love God more and live for him less. Well, God has standards for our lives. He has preset motives and principles for our lives. That we might live them so that we are living what? Godly. See, yes, it's about life because we're living it, but it's also about the godliness of the life that we're living. See, our culture today is worldly to say the least. It's saturated with sexual immorality, lascivious lifestyles, corruption, come on, infidelity, and not to mention the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the Bible says, and the what? And we're dealing with it. And we're dealing with that, but yet we're still trying to be godly, but we're saturated in the world that got all that going. Lasciviousness, that's, that's lust and lewd living. Come on, corruption. You don't know who's lying to you and who's telling you the truth. We got all that going. It's saturating the world, and yet God has called us to live a godly lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Come on, how we made our sense of the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, and our soundness of mind, which is the love of God. God gives us to serve him with gladness. And so that we can be not be so clouded because of the, the things and the cares of this world and the appeal of this world. Well, right. some people cannot serve God and won't serve God because the world is so what? Appealing. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Come on, you, you remember Joseph? He had one daughter. He had one daughter. And she was growed up just the way that they did to serve God and to love God. But the Bible says the world got her what? world got her attention. So much so, she what? She creeped off and put herself in a bad situation because she what? She cared for the world. And read the story it's in Genesis. Well, she creeped off. She got involved with the wrong people. She got molested. She got raped. And then it caused all her brothers to what? To stumble. Because what? They heard about her. And, and, and nothing's going to happen to my sister and something don't happen to them. Mm -hmm. so, so because she was caring for the world, it caught her attention. It caused all her brothers to want to stumble. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they did something they shouldn't have done. And, and, and it, 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 they, they did some things that displeased God. Mm -hmm. All because she allowed the cares or the attention of the world to what? To draw her out. She had every opportunity to live godly, but the world and the things of the world, it drew her what? Yeah, I drew her out. And it caused God to put judgment on, a lot, on, on her brothers who committed what they committed against uh, the Philistines. Come on, we've got to understand, we cannot be drawn away by the things of the world. Amen? Amen. See, in fact, the only way to live godly 
in this church, in this ungodly world, is through the power of God working in our life through the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody say it. Amen. Come on, it's only God, the power, his power working through us, like it says in Ephesians 3.20. Come on, we can do more, exceedingly abundantly more, by the power that what? Works in us. Yeah. Come on, the power of God has to work in you, church. Amen. See, it's the only way we can live godly. See, in our text today, Apostle Paul is dealing with a life that leads to godliness. See, verse 7 says that we have to exercise ourselves toward godliness. Uh, this is the time where we need to have what? Religious effort. Come on, don't be religious about being here and showing up here. Be religious or repetitive in your exercising towards what? Godliness. Come on, use your effort for that in the pursuit of a godly lifestyle. Come on, you might like to exercise or to run. Come on, you might, you might not walk or run. See, you may not even have an exercise bike. You may not have a trail mill or a peloton, whatever they got there. They got something new out here now to try to make you lose weight. But that machine don't work itself. Oh, Phil been trying to buy me a treadmill for the last five years. I'm going to get you a treadmill. I'm going to get you a treadmill. I said, I don't need no more co racks. <laughs> Because that trail mail don't work itself. That means I gotta be on it. That's right. That's right. And after a while, my jacket will be on it. My sweater will be on it. And I won't be on it. I got the trail mail walker. You can put it on a TV up there, you can do whatever you want. I'm just not a trail mail walker. I wanna be going somewhere, I wanna be seeing some things. It's hard to just walk. <laughs> I'm tired of thinking about it. Oh my! Come on, you, you might not have a treadmill. Come on, you may not do yoga. You might not have attended a Zumba class. You may not even have the membership to Planet Fitness. You might not have nothing. But you better learn how to what? Exercise yourself toward God in this. See, sometimes we just need a good spiritual workout to get us into godly shape. See, there, there, are just, there are just times when we have to set aside the time and the effort to grow in becoming more godly. It just don't happen, but you put no effort into it. Come on, when they call for a Sunday school class, you got to be there. When they're having a Zoom class online, you got to show up. When we have things to do and, and participate that's going to grow me, you got to be a part of it. Yeah. It's going to take some effort. Amen. It's going to take a sacrifice of your time. Get you off those TV shows, Law and Order, and all that stuff you like to watch. Wow. And get you out there zones so that God can begin to exercise. You can exercise towards your what? Your godliness. Amen. Come on, that's why he rebuked them and said you got a form of godliness and you denied the power thereof because what? You learned how to jargon and you learned how to position yourself, but you really didn't have it in your heart to be godly. So he rebuked them and he said you got a form of godliness. Come on, we got to check that every time. And make sure I'm not in church or living for God and just for a spiritual form. If I go to church, I'm godly. No, that don't mean that. See, if anything, it means you're in a place to work out. Yeah. Amen. You're in a place to exercise. That's right. That's right. Come on, might be at the door, might be in the ministry, might be in the worship, might be somewhere serving, but you what? You're exercising. Yeah. You're putting the work in. Amen? Amen. Come on, we got to understand. See, sometimes we don't understand what putting the work in means. Yeah. See, sometimes it means sacrifice, and all the time it means commitment. Well, that's why people don't they have failed marriages. That's why people can't keep jobs. They're not willing to put the work in. Well, it might mean you get there 20 minutes before on time. Amen. Amen. It might mean that. It might mean you come in early and you stay what? Amen. Why? You putting the work in. Well, it might mean you go watch them chick flicks with your wife. 
You put the what? The work in. It might mean you go shopping with her. I'm preaching. <laughs> Sometimes. Not all the time. Why do you put in the work in? See, don't, don't tell me that how bad things are getting or how things are falling apart when you have not put the work in. Amen. Amen. When you have not taken the time to exercise yourself. Amen. Ain't nobody going to prime you or pump you up to get you to do what you're supposed to do. You got to be motivated. That's right. You got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. So that God can start what? Doing the things in your life. Yes. See, bodily exercises will, verse 8 says, well, we profit you a little bit. But godly exercise, here this church, profits you in what? All things. I love that. He said you can work your body out and you might get a little bump here and there. Lose a little bit of weight. But when you exercise yourself towards godliness, it will profit you in what? All things. See, that's, that's what he said. He said, now you got the discipline you need. Now you get that self-control you need. When Popeyes was calling your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. Red Lobster was calling. <laughs> Whatever you like. Mm -hmm. Come on, certain things call your name. Sure enough. Come on, sometimes it's a drink. It's calling your name. That's right. Or a joint. It's calling my name. That's right. Come on, and it hit our mind. And then once it hit your mind, it hit your, it hit your ability to what? To bring it out. Well, that's why they got commercials. That's right. That's why they got these big salaries for the NFL, NBA. It's because of what? The commercials. It's the TV money. Because they know if they can put it in your eye gate, and the Bible says that eye gates is the windows to your what? So. And then your mind starts thinking about it, and then your wheel starts leaning that way. Well, that's why they make that big back look so good on TV. <laughs> then you get it, and you ain't never seen lettuce like that. <laughs> and the bread just is stick. <laughs> but on the commercial, have a Coke with a smile. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't had a Coke taste that good, that look that good. It's the subliminal messages. Right. And see, that's what the enemy uses against our lives. It's subliminal messages. To get us to buy this. Mm -hmm. Come on, to buy that. Mm -hmm. Come on, get on system. You'll lose 30 and 20. <laughs> Come on, and you done been on it a month, ain't lost nothing. Gain three pounds. <laughs> and then you tell everybody, Nutrisystem don't work. Nutrisystem don't work. <laughs> and the reality is, Nutrisystem does work. But you won't. Nah. You got no amens. Everybody say, you talking about me, Pastor? You talking about me? <laughs> Don't take it personal. I'm only preaching. Amen. <laughs> Come on, church. So, so let's work out, church. Amen. Come on. Sometimes we need these. Sure. But more times we need this. Amen. 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 Yeah. Because this will profit you in what? All, all, all things. things. All I'm going to be able to do more. Yeah. I'm going to be able to live better. Amen. I'm going to be able to see straight. That's right. I'm going to be able to get my head on straight. Amen. I'm going to be able to do those things because I'm exercising this Amen. in my life. Amen. Well, I'm not going to neglect that because that's going to profit me what? A little. I'm going to get a little bit out of that. Can breathe a little better. Can work a little better. Come on, can run a little bit. Will walk a little bit more. I told Floyd the other day, I hope nothing don't go down because I ain't running nowhere. They're going to have to get me. It's going to be hard. <laughs> I ain't running nowhere. <laughs> they can jump out the woods if they want. <laughs> There's gonna be fight or flight. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm fighting. I'm fighting. <laughs> won't be no running. Then when you're younger, you can run. Right, right. But once you get a little age, when you like, I ain't running nowhere. <laughs> here I am. You can come out here if you want to. I'm going to tase you. I'm oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Come on, we had an incident Wednesday. And this 
Cujo was out. I said, it wasn't nothing but the devil. We just had a good time in church. Was that last Sunday? Oh, well, don't be aware. Be aware. And the dog come out of nowhere. And we just standing around fellowship having a good time. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And here comes the devil. And we going everywhere. I ain't running. <laughs> just preach too. I'm not running. No way. <laughs> Had a little stick in the car. I said, he's going to get a headache today. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be lunch for the day. Whatever's going to happen. Something's going to happen. But well, sometimes that's the place we get. And we just had a good time, and here come the devil. Come on, we had to rebuke him, amen? So nobody got hurt. Thank God, amen. Come on, so let's work out, church. Let's exercise ourselves towards God. Amen. Come on, get in your Bible. Come on, worship the Lord. You can write these down. Come on, show up in church for fellowship. Come on, exercise your faith. Give and make sacrifices. Come on, love without hypocrisy. Picking and choose how you're going to love, when you're going to love. That's hypocrisy. Come on, love with a true heart. Come on, renew your mind from worldly desires. Come on, 2 second, second Peter, uh, Peter verse 2 through 4. God says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. See, that's, that's the exercise part. And of the Lord. And, and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power. Somebody say divine power. Divine power. That's what we have to do. See, because when we have God's divine power, mm -hmm. it, it, it messes up the tragedy of our humanity. Yeah. Because our humanity lets us down. It takes us places we don't want to go. It has us doing things we don't want to do. What? That's just the tragedy of our flesh. Mm -hmm. And too many times we are caught up with that tragedy. And living it out every day because we have not, what, exercise, exercise ourselves towards what? Godliness. Cool. It might seem mundane. You might not want to pick up your Bible. You may not want to pray. You may not want to worship. But if you're going to work out and exercise yourself towards godliness, you got to do some things. Yeah. Amen. Come on, if you're going to get a mind delivered from the worldly desires that are surround us, you got to exercise yourself towards what? Godliness. Amen. It's the only way we're going to get it. Amen. See, Second Peter said, he says, as his divine power has given to us all, hit his church, everybody's got this. Yes. He's given us to, to us all things that what? Pertain to life and godliness. You already got it. You just got to work out. Amen. Well, that's why, why Paul said, work out your soul salvation. You got what? Work it out. Yes. And he says, you got to do that by what? Fear and trembling. That's disrespecting God. And wanting not to land on no landmines, get blown up. So I can navigate safely to my destination. Living for God. Come on, we got to exercise this church. He said, he's given us everything for life and God. And through the knowledge of him who called us here this church by glory and virtue. By which we have been given these exceedingly great promises. These exceedingly great promises that through these, here this church, you may be partakers of his what? His divine nature. <coughs> we got to be getting his divine nature so that we're not living by our what? Human nature. Human nature is going to let you down. I'm going to tell you now. Don't forget this. You're not that smart, mm -hmm. and you're not that strong. Right. We need God. Yes. Amen. See, sometimes we get too caught up, and we think we're strong enough to handle things. Uh -huh. That's what we think. Mm -hmm. Come on, but we're not, and we think we're smarter than God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. How did it work for you last time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you didn't acknowledge God. See, that's what we got to examine. How does that work for you? When you're still not acknowledging God. Come on, we're, going, we're being led by what? Our flesh. We get caught up. Oh, she looks so good. She going mine. 
But God never wanted you to have her. You just caught up with your flesh. See, and then the next thing you know, you got a flesh relationship. And you think you got a spiritual relationship. Oh, that's why so many people get let down. Because mm -hmm. you think you're dealing with one thing and then you end up with another. Mm -hmm. Come on, you, you think you're, 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 you're getting somebody so godly, but then you find out they're compromised. Yeah. They're compromised. Come on, they drink with you, smoke with you, sleep with you. Mm -hmm. And then walk away and say, I'm going to church. <laughs> and then so many people wonder why they get in relationships <clears throat> and the people don't respect you. They never respect <laughs> Talk about you going to men's prayer breakfast and then getting home, you want to sleep with me. Why you go to the prayer breakfast? And you ain't really trying to be godly. Come on, then we set ourselves up for these fallouts and these letdowns because we made a flesh decision. And we yelling out to God, bless this mess. He ain't not gonna bless that mess. You're gonna live with it for a while. For whatsoever man saw of that shall he also. Oh. That's why we got to be careful. Getting involved with things and, and doing certain things that are motivated by our, what? our flesh. Because we get into things and then we don't want to pay the price for it. We think we can make decisions and just walk away from it. No, it don't work like that. Come on, some people have been living with it for years. Because they weighed what? A flesh decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not one time they acknowledged God. Not one time they thought they could figure it out. They thought they were smart enough. And not one time did they say, God, is this for me? Mm -hmm. Come on, if it's not for you. Come on, put out a fleece, do whatever you got to do. But find out what God wants for your life. Amen. Come on, if a door is open and God has opened the door, walk through it. But if it's shut, don't be kicking it, knocking it, and texting somebody saying, you going to talk to me or not? <laughs> don't let that door say shut because God don't shut that door. Yeah. And don't you try to open it. Don't try to break it down, let it go. Yeah. So that God can get the glory yeah. out of your life. Yeah. For too many times, church, we settle for the fulfillment decoy. Uh -huh. This going to make me happy. This is going to make me feel right. Mm -hmm. And it's all just the enemy's plan because he knows what you want to. Mm -hmm. And he'll send what? A fulfillment decoy. Yes. You thought that was the car you wanted. Mm -hmm. You thought that was the job you wanted. And all it was was a fulfillment decoy to suck you in. Mm -hmm. And then you what? You pay more than you wanted to pay. <clears throat> and you stay longer than you wanted to stay. Because yeah. mm -hmm. wow. what? I fell for the okie doke. Yeah. <laughs> We don't admit it. We just what? Lift the word. Head down. We gonna make it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we gotta stop falling for these fulfillment decoys. I'm way out of time, but I'm way, I got way more messages. Hit this church. Let's finish this up. Come on. God's given us His grace, these promises, so that we can have His what? Divine nature. That means what? We're making spirit filled choices. Well, our natural tendencies and choices are the main things that get us into trouble. That's right. Cool. The, the, the best way to live a spiritual life is to make sure you can cut against the ground, cut, cut against the grain of your own flesh. Because sometimes I desire to do this, or I desire what? Not to do that. Yeah. Well, that's what we need to exercise, work out our faith. Sometimes you may have to pass on dinner and lunch and breakfast. Yeah. Pass the plate. <laughs> It's what? It's working it out. Amen. And then guess what? You get a different discipline. Come on, some people have addictions and, and trials and struggles and, and strongholds on their life, and 24 hours could change their life. Amen. If they just sat for 24 hours, drunk some water, and say, God, I love mm -hmm. you. Thank you for your deliverance. Mm -hmm. 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And it would break that right there. Mm -hmm. But we won't even do 24 hours. Let alone call the church fast for three days. We like, what? No, he what? <laughs> I think I'm talking to foreign language. He's talking in tongues. I don't know what the pastor was saying today. <laughs> and he didn't give an interpretation. I'm going to the Bible. <laughs> I know he wasn't right. Talk about something don't eat. What? <laughs> Got 
my man, you plan for the week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And some snacks, too, because I got the chips I like. And the cookies, I got it. But yet, you called me to a fast. Come on, fasting is just what he says in Isaiah. It's to loose the bars of wickedness. Sometimes the stronghold on us is because some of the things that's attached to us. And food is a big thing. Come on, food and sex. Fast that. Got real quiet, got real quiet, got quiet. If you're single, you should be anyway. <clears throat> but fasting is a spiritual discipline. That's how we work. We work out our soul salvation. It's the, that's how we get spiritual strength because we're what? Exercising ourselves towards what? Godliness. I don't like to fast, but I know I need to fast. Amen. See, because once I understand that, I have to turn down the plate or I, I can't eat lunch, I can't eat breakfast, or I won't eat dinner, or whatever we have to do. But we need to fast and pray. Amen. Cool. I'm not trying to manipulate God. No. I'm trying to get God to settle me, yeah. to help me navigate through this. Because if God doesn't help me navigate through this, I might make another wrong decision. Yeah. I might make another wrong choice. Yeah. But sanctify me. Yeah. Give me a clear thought. See, once you start fasting, your thoughts get what? Clearer. Yeah. You don't wake up thinking about, oh man, she's so nice. She's so you, you're not turmoil. Oh, he's so cute. He's so, he said he was so good. You don't get in those turmoils. Why? Because you're clear. And you can hear God. It might even hurt. It might be challenging to say, to, to not get involved or not do certain things. But it's for your good. Amen. Come on. God's promise is he's going to work everything for your good. And they say he's going to work everything the way you like it. That's right. I ain't read that in the Bible. He says it's going to work for your what? Good. Well, I wanted to do that. No, for your good. For your good. Come on, church. Uh, he said, we're giving these promises. See, godliness is a God-centered life. It's not a set of disciplines or a system. It's not that. See, it's a person. See, you being godly is the godliness. It's only manifest through a person. You, godliness is not an existence. It is a person. And see, and we have to say, that's me. Come on, that's me. That one person, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> say, that's me. That's, that's me. Oh, if you can't say it, that's fine, but you're going to get there. Yeah. Come on, it is a person. See, a godly life is in the, in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who appeared in a body and was vindicated by what? The Spirit. See, many people who say, oh, yes, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but he feels distant from my struggles. See, being a Christian is more than believing in Jesus. Y'all got to hear that, church. Amen. Yes, the word says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. saved. But you're not saved yet. Mm -hmm. You shall be saved. Amen. See, it's not just believing in Jesus Christ because faith without works is dead. Amen. So it's not just that. Mm -hmm. see, see, it is the life of Jesus Christ in you Amen. by the Holy Spirit. See, this perhaps is the most important thing for us to grasp in the whole scripture and the whole Christian life is that Jesus Christ wants to live in us. Amen. Well, faith is more than just believing in Christ. Faith without works is dead. Faith unites us with Christ so that we are united with him in his, his death, burial, and his what? His resurrection. You got to understand that. Remember that faith receives Christ. Come on, y'all can write these scriptures there. I don't have time to go there. John chapter 1, verse 13. For as many as received him, to them he gave the what? The power. See, sometimes we feel weak and helpless and struggling is because we have not received him. Not just believed in him, but we have not received him. But to many as received him, to them he gave what? You want to get stronger? Receive Jesus. Amen. Well, that's why we make the plea every week. If you don't know the Lord, receive him today. Amen. It's going to change your life. Amen. See, faith feeds on Christ. John chapter 6, verse 54. Faith feeds on Christ. See, Christ is your life. He is your life. That's what it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. And, and, and this is the great part about it. And your life 
is hidden with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3, verse 3. Come on, Ephesians, uh, uh, Paul talks about uh, his life. He says, it's no longer I who live, Galatians chapter 2.20. Galatians 2.20, he said, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who what? Who lives in me. See, see, that's what God wants to do. He don't want to just be in existence. He don't want to just be a footnote of your life. He don't want to be that genie in the bottle you only call on when you struggle. Amen. He wants to live in you Amen. and live through you. Amen. Yes. He says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I live is for the glory of, what? of God. See, Jesus gave us a wonderful illustration of this. I am the vine, you are the branches in John 15. He said, godliness is him, and it flows through him. It grows in us, and we grow in him. See, that's the hope of, of you living this life. Mm -hmm. See, with you and Christ in you, it is the what? It's the hope of glory. Yes. It's the hope of glory. See, I'm going to give you these points that we're going to leave. i got no time, but can y'all take this? Amen. Amen. See, there are two misunderstandings here in the church of the Christian life that have caused much of the confusion on how we live as Christ. See, the number one is the hard labor version. We labor and strive. That's in 1 uh, Timothy 4, verse 9. See, this version says that the Christian life is one of great effort to try and live a godly life. See, many people live here. The hard labor life. We, we try to make it happen. We try to work hard at it. And yes, we need effort. But the effort that we get is the God, the, the sustained effort that God gives us. Yeah. See, because we can't do it ourselves. See, but there's no power, there's no energy, and very little joy about the people who live the hard labor and strive life. No, they're the ones that come up with the song, I'm going up yeah. Yeah. the rough side of the mountain. I don't know the rest. <laughs> But I know the song. Amen. Why? It's because they see they see the Christian life as a journey of hard labor, and for sometimes it may feel like that. And mentally, you might ex be exhausted because it's the hard labor version yeah. that we're striving. So they feel like the Christian life is impossible, and so they become what discouraged. Wow. Come on, the second one is the no labor version. Come on, First Timothy four nine again. For we put our hope in the living God. See, this version says there's nothing we Christians can do. We're powerless. We have to let go and you, you said it, and let go. Well. Y'all say it all the time. You better not let go. You better hold on. See, they become completely what? Passive. And their only effort is forced effort. And their only hook is God going to take care of it. How many times people don't say that? Wow. And they try to what? Back out their commitment or their part of it. Mm. And the first thing they say, God got it. Mm -hmm. But what you got? Mm -hmm. if, if God's got it, then what you got? Because it's weighing on you more than anybody else I see. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure you do your part. Mm -hmm. Hold on to what you got to hold on to. Mainly your faith. So that God can see you through. Amen? Amen. Come on, remember, our faith always has to have some corresponding works. Yes, I believe God's going to heal me. But I ain't going to sit in the bed and keep complaining. Yes, I believe God's going to deliver me. But I ain't going to still keep going back to the bar and to the club thinking, I ain't going to drink no more, but I keep going back. Come on, that's what happened with Samson. God's going to take care of me. He always has. So you get what? Going back. And a lot of our troubles happen in our life because we keep what? Going back. Well, the Bible describes it as a dog going back to his what? His home. He threw it, back, threw it up and then he won't what? go either. We disgust it, but we do it all the time. Just a different name. Just a different person. Just a different way. But you always want to keep going back. Well, we got to get delivered from that church. Amen. I get delivered from that. And not be passive in our pursuit of, of godliness, our, our working out towards godliness. 
See, they, 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 the, the people that have no language, they don't see what the Bible says about fighting against sin. Come on, they, they don't press daily in the armor of God. And, and they say there's nothing they can do to grow in holiness. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. See, it's all up to God. It sounds so spiritual, but actually it divorces what God has joined together. Because he wants to join your faith, not your wishes. Mm -hmm. See, faith is the thing, the substance of things what? Hope oh, Come on. But it's the evidence of things what? Not seen. I don't see it. Right. But I believe you, Lord. Amen. It's not in my eyesight, but I believe you, Lord. Amen. Come on. It divorces us from there, of what God has joined together. Come on, some people are divorced from their relationships. They're divorced from their responsibility. They're divorced from their children and other things that, that, that God has joined them with. And God said, no, no, you got to have a different faith. Amen? Amen? Come on, lastly, see the gospel life version. This is one we want. For this we labor and strive. This is 1 Timothy 4.10, the next verse. We have put our hope in the living God. See, gospel life is the active pursuit of godliness through the power and presence of Jesus Christ in you. It's the active pursuit. Come on. And, and, and I engage in this struggle. Come on. Because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're what? Mighty in God. We wouldn't need weapons if we didn't have a what? A fight. Why God give you weapons and you act like they don't exist? Why he give you an armor and you won't put it on? It, 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 it drives us in a different direction. It, it, see, I engage in the struggle and I fight this fight. Well, that's what Paul said in his 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 valid his his valedictorian speech or his 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 uh, benediction of his life. He said, "I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the way. And now, laid up for me is the crown of righteousness. And not only for me, but for your heart too." Amen. Oh, I love to read that in the Bible. I love to read that. See, he acknowledged it was his benediction. He was going home. He was, he was finishing his course, his race. And sometimes we don't finish. Leaving stuff undone. You started, but you quit. You engaged, but you backed out. And God said, this is the gospel life version. The good news version. Oh, that we press. I press towards the prize of the high call that's in Christ Jesus, with hope because Jesus lives in me. Come on, that's how you live a godly life. And that's the mystery of godliness. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Father, we thank you for the word of God. I thank you for your exhortation to exercise myself towards godliness. Come on, let's not be confused or misled that certain things just come to us. See, yes, we get certain benefits through being connected to the true vine. But the fruit that grows on us has to be grown. Come on, the effort that we put in, the things that we do, the things that we, we participate in. See, some people will spend more on some clothes than they would on a book, than on a class. Than in the kingdom. But God says sometimes there, there are things and sacrifices that must be made in our life. There must be some attention to details. He says, follow me. Follow these instructions carefully. Come on, stop being willy-nilly all over the place. Conceptualizing this and figuring out that. And you've never made a commitment to exercise yourself toward godliness. It is a great commitment, but it is a great reward. Yes. Come on, it's up to us, church. Come on, it is up to us to be compelled by the word of God yes. to do what it says. Yes. Come on, we all want the manifestation. I want God to do what he promised me. Yes. But we got to do what we promised him. Let's do our part. Come on, don't get tired by 
Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing. For if you do not faint, you will reap the reward. Yes. So why every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Oh, we, we're talking Wednesday nights, we're studying, living a godly lifestyle. And the first participation in that is we have to make a submission to God. Well, James chapter 4 says, submit yourself to God. But then we got to do the next part. Resist the devil. He ain't leaving you if you put until you put up a fight. Oh, if I try to drag one of y'all out of here and you ain't supposed to go with me, you better put up a fight. <laughs> well, that's how they identify people when they've been in the struggle. They look under their nails and make sure that they put up a fight. They look at their hands and make sure it was a struggle. See, it's the same way with our persistency in God. We've got to submit to him and resist the devil. Yes. And the promise is he going to get out of your life. Yes. He going to get out of your life. Yes. See, I don't know about you, but I need the devil out of my life. Yes. Yes. Stop showing up in my address. Stop showing up in my workplace. Stop showing up in my church. In the name of Jesus. Let's put up a fight. Let's make the effort. What might mean you getting into your word more? You can't even find your Bible. Get your Bible. I guarantee you, you read one scripture a day and you do it for 30 days, you'll never be the same. But we need spiritual disciplines every day. Every day. See, there's no condemnation in God. See, sometimes we just condemn ourselves. There's no condemnation in God. But we're living in the Spirit. So my prayers be closed and every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And no one's looking around. But Father, in Jesus' name, we need a divine touch from you in Jesus' name. Yes. You said that we will be partakers of your divine nature. God, I, it's, it's a struggle with this humanity. We make decisions we don't want to make. We say things we don't want to say. I act certain ways I don't want to act. It's because it's humanity. But Father, my prayer today is for us and everyone watching and everyone here that you will complete that. For you've given us everything for life and godliness, but that you will complete that in us. That we will be partakers of your divine nature. So if you're here today and you want God to move supernaturally in your life so that your decisions won't be fleshly all the time that I will have some spiritual decisions in my life, that not of my humanity, what I want, but not my will, but God will be done. Yes. So if that is you, just yes. shoot your hand up real quick, say, that's me, that's me, Lord. Yes. Father, you see the hands, you see the hands, you see the hands. Thank you. You see the hearts. Come on, you at home, lift your hand right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for this divine nature. Right now, my prayer is that it be imparted unto you in Jesus' name. Come on, impartation right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, I, I really want to touch everybody. I want to touch you, but by the Spirit of God. Impartation right now in the name of Jesus. Impartation right now. For it is not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. Impartation. Your divine nature right now in Jesus' name. Give us the strength to work out our soul salvation, God, and make our exercise fit yes. towards godliness in the name of Jesus. And maybe you're watching, maybe you're here, and the Lord speaking to your heart about making a decision. Giving your heart to Jesus. We're all sinners, but we saved by grace. It is the gift of God. Not of works, does any man boast. Come on, it is, but it's about our willful decision. God won't violate you. He won't twist your arm to make a commitment. 
But he said in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Or is there somebody today that wants to repent and come back to God? Or maybe you did it before, but God said, come back, come back, come back. It's just, you're just one prayer away. Say, Father, forgive me. I've strayed from your way. I've strayed from your voice. I ran from you, Lord God. Yes. But today I'm back. Yes. Oh, it's like the prodigal son. I'm back home. And all the heaven will rejoice. Yes. As that father did for his son. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. See, it's just a matter of us coming to ourselves and acknowledging who Jesus is in our life. Yes. Thank you for cleansing me. Yes. Thank you for saving me. Yes. Come into my heart today so that I can live for you for the rest of my life. Yes. Well, if you made that prayer your prayer, God is going to come right now. Bible says you harden not your heart. He's coming in and he's going to suck with you. I mean, he's going to fellowship and break, break. He's going to change your life yes. to where old things are passed away and behold, all things will become new because what? You become new. Yes. So we thank you, Father. Thank you. For doing the work you. that we cannot do. Thank you. And empowering us yes. to do the things that we can't do. Jesus. We give you praise, Father, for all you're going to do. We thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. To God be all the glory, Lord. As we leave this place, we never leave God's presence. As he watches between you and I, may God bring us back by his amazing grace. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Am